All right, so it's been about two months in the Nike React Infinity Run flying in, and I wanted to give you guys a follow-up video from my original review of this new uh, running sneaker. From a casual perspective, I just want to let you guys know if it's worth buying still, and some of the pros and cons that I've updated uh, from the initial video. So let's go ahead and get into the review. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys would like to shop this week's top sneaker deals that I curate for you guys, check the link in the description, as well as if you're trying to buy a pair of these guys right here, $160 is the retail price, as you can see right here. And I went true to size with a 9.5, which is my regular size uh, footwear. And these fit me perfect with that 9.5. Now this is one of those shoes that honestly, I saw images of, I was like, oh cool, they have a new shoe. Like I wasn't really excited to give it a try. I was a fan of the Epic React. There was some things that I loved about the shoe. There was definitely some things I didn't like. And then there is the Infinity React. To me, this is like the Epic React 3 because it's stylistically, it looks very similar to the other shoes as I mentioned. And I've done some comparison videos uh, as well to the other models. But they changed the game a little bit with the traction pattern. They added a little bit more traction. They made it more Reactful. As you could see, they added a lot more React to the midsole and then they also made it like wider even which is something that I personally prefer because I have a little bit wider feet which actually is quite noticeable on feet it's really really good at least for myself because of how wide it is just to give you some background on the design though it says designed to keep running fearlessly uh, the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit will keep you running created for all levels of runners this shoe delivers on the promise of innovation with more foam and improved upper details for a secure and cushion feel. Lace up and feel the potential as you hit the road. It's a lightweight fit and all new Flyknit loft technology which is stronger and more durable than the previous iteration. It features three distinct layers to keep your foot secure while providing a lightweight and flexible feel while you move. It says it has a stable feel, it's a higher foam stack, height provides a softer feel, a wider shape provides more stable ride, helping release energy with every step. It says the shape of the Nike React foam midsole is all about the zonal performance providing support in three phases uh, of a runner's stride, flexibility at the toe off, a smooth ride at mid stance and cushioning at contact. Less materials in the shoe means you're closer to the foam creating a softer, more responsive experience and increased rubber and the outsole helps you deliver traction and durability. The weight is 10.27 ounces for a men's size 10. There is an offset but I never focus on any of that stuff because uh, personally it's just for a casual perspective. And they also focus quite a bit about a study that Nike funded to suggest that these shoes help reduce injury. I feel like that's gimmicky in a sense to fund your own study to show that this will reduce injury next to another one of your inline models, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, I think it's a well cushioned shoe, but whether or not it reduces injury, I mean, especially from a runner's perspective, I, I don't think it's something you can judge based on their um, article that they had. This is definitely a well cushioned shoe though, and it's something that I definitely really, really like. So let's go ahead and get into some of the pros and some of the cons. So as I mentioned, a lot of the pros are pretty much the same as the other one. So I'm just gonna summarize here a little bit. If you missed the other video, go check it out in the description. The first pro I already mentioned a little bit, but the traction I think is definitely a big improvement, especially over the Epic React. I like the fact that it's all over the place. However, you do see little wear marks. I don't know if you're able to actually see it in the camera, but there is some spots like right around here that the React actually wears off. And you could see that it looks like a different color um, in certain areas like down here and whatnot where you strike a lot because this is uh, one of those technologies that's really, really durable, but the layer or whatever of paint that they have out here definitely comes off pretty easy. Uh, but all in all, it actually does last durability wise. Um, a lot longer than originally anticipated. The traction improvements are pretty good. I do hear sometimes that uh, these are a little bit slippery on wet flooring. Uh, I've found that a little bit to be true. For me, I just sort of proceed with caution anyway, it, no matter what shoes I'm wearing, if I'm walking like in the garage or something, my shoes are wet. The next pro about the shoe is the new Flyknit Loft material it is pretty nice. I actually don't mind it at all. It's a little bit firmer than the regular Flyknit and it's not as stretchy. They do have some stretchy parts like around the tongue, but this new loft material is kind of nice. I like that it's not overly stretchy, but it is really, really breathable, which is appreciated. I would say the pro is the price point of $160 is pretty reasonable, but I mean, maybe other people would disagree. I don't mind paying $160 for this. That's what I paid for my pair. But, uh, but I think that eventually, obviously these are gonna go down and they'll be like 80 bucks in a year from now. It will be a super bargain at the $80 price point. So. Uh, it's sort of a pro for me, at least it wasn't 180, but obviously uh, 160 is still a lot. The fit is true to size, as I mentioned, another pro. And the next pro is that the Nike React cushioning is really soft. It's durable, it's light, it's responsive. 
It's all of those things, but it's also plentiful on this model. Enough that the wide track on it makes it really, really nice. But the part that I really appreciate the most is the forefoot here is also really thick. Sometimes they curve it too thin and make it smaller in the front. And some people might actually prefer it if it's actually thinner because it gives you more like actual feel for the road or whatever you're running on. But if you just want max cushioning or just a cushioned shoe, like I like the fact that it's like pillowy and cloudy in the front of the shoe as well as the back. And that's what I feel in this shoe and something that wasn't there necessarily in the Epic React for myself. And the reason why I think this is a better buy because if you're looking for that cloud-like sensation through the entire midsole, it also has it in the forefoot and I notice it at least in my feet. That said, they do have 24% more React than the Epic React 2 as they mentioned. And also I would say that there's overall really good improvements over the Epic React. So I actually think the stability of the shoe is actually pretty nice as well. It's something that I wouldn't expect because it's such a soft and squishy shoe, but uh, the uh, reinforcement around here is really nice. Uh, for the heel and then also the fact that they made it such a wide track just makes it uh, that much more stable feeling and they did a good job engineering the shoe to have like a really good all-around feel minimalistic upper but um, but all around really good feel on feet anyway let's get into some of the cons as I mentioned previously some of the colorways are just not very good I personally don't really love this colorway I've gotten to appreciate it a little bit more as I've been wearing them but it's not for everybody and the other colorways that they have out there look really generic almost um, so I haven't found any other really good colorways that they've made of the shoe, unfortunately. So still, I would say is a con. And the overall style of the shoe is just meh. It's not like a really cool, stylish looking shoe, at least in my opinion, mostly because it has that singular upper again, where there's not a lot of layers going on here. There's just a mesh upper, uh, a little panel on the side and, uh, and a little bit of reinforcement. Sometimes simplistic can also equal basic and that's kind of what it feels like, at least to myself, at least from the aesthetic position. I said it before, I'll say it again, it's basically an Epic React 3 that's just rebranded. And as I mentioned, the Pro is 160, but a con is also the fact that you can get the Epic React, which is pretty good for uh, 60 bucks or something like that. So $100 more than the Epic React 2s um, on sale when you can get them at Nike. And I post them all the time at collectivekicks.com whenever they have a Nike or Adidas sale like that. But, um, but it's hard to justify $100 extra for something that feels 20% better than the previous version. And the last con that I have to add to the shoe, which is something that is probably the most irritating to me, is this collar back here is really rigid and rough. It's a really thick material, which I think is a plus, and it's stretchy-ish, but it's just really, really rough. And when I wear this with even ankle socks that are pretty low cut, um, it digs into my my heel cup. I found it annoying a couple of times to the point where I was like, oh, I don't want to wear these shoes today. I'm going to switch them up and wear something else. Maybe for you guys, you don't have that problem. But if you do and you um, have noticed that, leave a comment and let other people know that I'm not making it up in my own head. And also leave a comment in the comment section if you do run in the shoes. Like, do you have things about them that you like or dislike as well? Add your own pros and cons in the comment section. And if you just wear them casually as well, leave some comments on some things that I got wrong or right or add your own thoughts um, as well. I always like to see the, the feedback and the validation of what I'm thinking because I'm not a professional. I'm just a dude that records the, my experience for you guys and shares it with you guys that may be interested in the shoes, but also shares it with you guys that also have the shoes out there as well. So anything I get wrong, you guys can correct me in the comment section. One other thing I will mention as a con, it's something that is a little bit annoying is the naming convention. It's Epic React and then React Infinity and with the React before and after. I always call these the Infinity Reacts because that's what it says here. But you can see Nike's branding so inconsistent they can't even keep it straight. It says React Infinity there. And then it says Infinity React here. So it's a pet peeve and you guys already know. The naming convention thing definitely needs some work over at Nike. I don't know why they can't keep it straight. The final thoughts though, regardless, is this a buy from a casual perspective? And I would say uh, absolutely for myself, this is definitely one that's gonna be in rotation after I'm done with this video. Like I've worn these for the last couple months, not every day, but at least three times a week or so. And it's just one of those shoes that I can still see throwing on every once a week. Uh, just because it's such a uh, an incredibly nice shoe. It's just an all-around great shoe, very versatile, and um, and it's well cushioned, but it's also a little bit responsive. And I, I like the engineering feet that they did. The only thing I don't really love is that heel cup on the upper, but if I wear the right socks for the day, these are a go. Another thing is, you know when you buy a new cologne and then you wear it for a day and you're like, oh, this is like super dope. Like I, I love this new cologne I got. And then you wear it the fifth day and the sixth day and then a month later, you're like, yeah, the, the clone, it just kind of like doesn't have the same effect as it had the very first day that you got the clone. It just doesn't smell as good, I guess. I could use that same metaphor with these shoes, but it, it's different. I thought that this would be a pair of shoes that I would try on the first time and be like, wow, these are pretty good. Try them on the next day and then the next day. And then eventually, like a month later, 
I would wear them again and be like, oh, you know, the, the cushion and I'm just used to it. Uh, it's, it's surprisingly good. It's actually one that you put on again. And you're like, ah, there's that comfort. And there's that, um, the cushioning that I was like looking for when I bought these shoes originally. And that same sort of feeling like kind of resonates with you time and time again, when you wear the shoe, which is something that's actually kind of nice. It doesn't feel like it's bottoming me out. My feet feel pretty happy every time I put them on, but that's kind of my thoughts on the new infinity react. I think it's a great shoe and it's one that's going to stay in rotation. If you guys want to try these out, feel free to hit the link in the description. And one other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of times we buy sneakers in this space, like from the sneakerhead perspective, and we can't return them because they're limited edition or whatever else. This is not one of those situations. These shoes are available everywhere. You can buy them from Nike. If you don't like them, just simply return them. And it's the best way to be able to try the shoes out, get an idea of if you like the comfort of the shoe, and then you can send them back if you, if you don't want them. For me personally, I ended up keeping my pair just because it was that good and it was one that I really uh, wanted to uh, be able to compare to other shoes because this now sets a new precedence and benchmark with Nike React sneakers in my opinion, especially from like an all around perspective. Like there's some Nike React shoes that have more cushioning like the Prestos, but these are an, more of an all around shoe. The Prestos can't really work out or run in those shoes. They're just like boats of React. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you are new to the channel, if you guys like these casual reviews, which is what this channel focuses on. But, but have a good rest of the day and hopefully we'll see you guys for some more sneaker content very soon. Peace guys.